Shaders is one of the most resource intensive Minecraft mods. By its very nature, it actually increases the strain on your computer by making the lighting and shading in Minecraft look so much better than it does by default. However, does shaders have to lag Minecraft or is there actually a way to increase performance and reduce lag at the very least while you're using shaders? Well, of course there is. And the first place to look is actually what you're using to install and run shaders in the first place. There are two primary shaders mods out there, Optifine and Iris Plus Sodium. Oddly, Optifine, which is the most popular one, is actually worse performing for most shaders packs. This means that if you're okay with using Fabric and not Forge mods, then I would honestly recommend using Iris and Sodium together in order to install shaders and not Optifine. This is how you're going to be able to get the most FPS possible out of shaders, and you can find links on how to install Iris, Sodium, and Optifine if you want in the description down below. What if you're stuck with Optifine, though, because you want to use Forge mods, or you just like Optifine more in general, which I totally get. Well, in that case, you should look at the shaders pack itself, and it's actually important to do that even if you're using Iris shaders to run your shaders, because it's going to increase FPS on both Optifine and Iris. Every single shaders pack is different with how it handles lighting and shading. For this reason, Every single shaders pack can perform differently. Some will have less lighting, more shading, and they might perform a little better, or vice versa. It really just depends. However, there are shaders packs that are specific for high performance and high FPS, and you can actually find a video in the description down below that goes through a few of those specifically. However, for this video, we're going to be using Makeup Ultra Fast shaders for our examples, simply because it gives you a lot of shaders features and really good performance on most systems. Now, Iris shaders and pretty much every other shaders pack out there actually have default profiles that you can activate in order to get either better performance or better graphics and, and better you know lighting and all that out of your shaders pack. Now, in order to access these, you'll need to access shader settings. For Optifine, just go to your shader settings where you normally add and select your shaders, and in the bottom right, you will see the shaders settings or shader options button. The same thing goes for Iris, except when you go into your shaders menu, where you normally activate or change your shaders, you will see it in the bottom center to be able to go to the shader settings and get those configured. Once you do this, most shaders packs actually have the ability to select either a profile or a preset. They all call it something a little bit different, but it's going to be like high FPS, better performance. You might have a high, medium, low, with high usually being the best looking and low being the one that's actually the best FPS or vice versa. It really just depends. Usually you also have colors. Green usually means higher FPS and red usually means lower. Sometimes that can be flipped. You just kind of have to play around with it. But nevertheless, you can also hover over a lot of these shader profile settings and be able to see exactly what each one of them does. So that's helpful as well, considering they're kind of all different depending on the shaders pack you use. You can also go through and set up a lot of these different settings yourself. So if you want to go in and manually do that, you can. But for me, every shaders pack is different and understanding exactly what's going on in there can be a little difficult. And most of the time, just using the default predefined preset is the way to go. One thing worth noting, though, is that the high higher the FPS you get with shaders, usually the lower the shading and the worse the lighting that the shader pack adds in. It's because the lighting and the shading is what's actually lagging your computer. So more FPS is usually at the sacrifice of those things. It's also why you probably should have a dedicated graphics card if you want to run shaders. Running shaders on an Intel graphics card that's integrated is extraordinarily difficult and hard to do. I would recommend having a dedicated graphics card if you can. Get one GPU prices have dropped so much that it's honestly great to pick up some of the older NVIDIA cards like 2080, 3080s for a discounted price and get a ton more performance out of your computer and thus get better performance out of shaders as well. So where do we go from here? What else can we do to improve FPS with Irish shaders? Now, if you want to improve FPS with Optifine, we do have a link in the description down below for great Optifine settings that will give you good performance as well as make Minecraft look good. And in that video, we get over 100 FPS using Optifine and shaders. However, what about Iris? Well, let's go ahead and jump in game right now and look at the Iris settings and specifically the Iris plus sodium settings in game. You do need sodium to get these settings and to get the best performance possible, but luckily Iris is pretty much making sodium mandatory at this point. All right, so here we are in game. We can go ahead and navigate to video settings and here is all of our sodium as well as Iris shader settings. So Iris shaders is here. You can see makeup ultra fast shaders is already active. And then if we come back over to general, this is where we're gonna start. We're gonna go through every single one of these quickly, but also kind of explain them somewhat in order to increase your FPS. Now, 
all these are up to you. You can change these to whatever you want, but I would go ahead and actually set these up exactly how I have them, and then, once you've done that, you can come back and tweak. For example, you can turn your render distance up if you need to. Speaking of render distance, we're actually going to start off with 8. This is a huge thing that will actually increase your performance a ton, with or without shaders. So, let's go ahead and set it to 8 for now. 12 is where I would recommend running it for, you know, a better PC, and great computers can run it even higher, but we're going to start with 8 for now. Max shadow distance can actually not be changed for me. I believe this is due to the shaders pack I have, but if you can run this lower, the lower the better. I would probably say half or so of what your render distance is. So at eight chunks, it would be four, but seven is fine for us. Simulation distance is also something that the lower the better in order to be able to increase performance. Now the reason for this is, as we can read, simulation distance controls how far away terrain and entities will be loaded. So the higher this is, the farther away they'll be loaded. There's no reason for this to be higher than your render distance, so at least turn this down to 8. But again, I would recommend it at about half or so, which in this case would be 5 because that's all the way down. Brightness uh, doesn't matter, doesn't affect performance at all, and then GUI scale doesn't perfect performance at all, but you can change it to something else if you want. Now full screen is going to affect performance, but understand if you do want to run Minecraft full screen, that's perfectly fine. VSync, I would recommend turning it off for now, and max frame rate is what we want, so we want to change this all the way to the max to get the maximum amount of frame rate that we can, and uh, just blow it out of the water. The rest of the stuff on this page does not affect performance. From there we can move on to quality. Now for quality, I understand you want to run fancy, especially if you're running shaders, but let's start off with fast for now because fast is going to give you good performance and honestly, because of shaders, it's still going to look okay. For clouds, I would actually turn these off. It's not a huge performance boost, but I like to use shader clouds and usually that means turning default clouds off. But nevertheless, you can turn them to whatever you'd like. Weather, leave that default. Leaves quality, we want to turn this to fast. Leaves are actually a decent performance boost because they are pretty uh, difficult to display with the transparency. Particles, I would run this on minimal because particles are again another boost. Smooth lighting, we can actually leave on. We're running shaders, so we want to be able to get good lighting, and as you can see, it's a low performance impact anyway. Biome blend is a similar thing, but I would actually recommend turning this off. Entity distance goes back to how far away entities can spawn away from you and be activated, so we want to go ahead and turn this down. I actually turn this down all the way usually because I'm not one to really care about entities, but if you really want people to be able to fight enemies and things like that, and zombies coming from a distance and all that, turn this up to 100 or maybe even a little higher, but I turn this all the way down. Entity shadows, again, we can leave this. We're using shaders, so we can leave it. Same thing with Vinay. That's up to you. If you like it, you can turn it on. If you don't, it doesn't really matter. As far as mip maps go, we want to go ahead and turn this all the way down to zero. Click apply in the bottom right, and now it's going to apply those settings. By the way, it should have also applied these back here, and as we can see, it did, but it's probably safe to hit that at the end of every page. Moving on to performance, this is where we can really get some things boosted with different kind of changes to how Minecraft's doing rendering. Luckily, all this happens in the background. For chunk updates, we want to go ahead and turn this all the way down because we're going for FPS here. If you do see chunks loading slow, you can turn this up, but we want it all the way down because we want most FPS. Always defer chunk loading. I would recommend go ahead and turn this on because basically all this will do is potentially cause some chunk holes. So if you do see a bunch of holes in game where like there's a bunch of blocks and there's not rendering, that's usually because of that. So you can turn that setting on if you want, but for the max FPS, we want to defer this. All of these need to be turned on. Block face culling, fog occlusion, entity culling, particle culling, and anime only visible textures. All those are FPS boosts and need to be turned on, right like so. For advanced, we want to go ahead and check our to our chunk memory allocation. Needs to be set to async. Use persistent mapping needs to be turned on. CPU render needs to be somewhere in the middle, three to five, and this is going to be different depending on how many cores you have, I believe, with your PC. So I'm gonna leave this as default. Most likely that's okay for you as well to leave it as it is default. And allow direct memory access needs to be enabled. Now, I didn't mention this already, but make sure you do go in here and select the basically performance setting for shaders. We're gonna do the low setting here. Apply that, and then all of our settings are now set and we can come in game. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a 
persistent FPS counter, but we can pull it up with three F3, and we have over 200 FPS coming in here. Boom, look at that. Now, one of the things I actually don't like is the leaves. I love transparent leaves that look really, really good. So I'm gonna come in here and actually turn those on. I'm gonna do the fancy leaves quality. I'm also gonna turn on fancy graphics, click apply. Look, the leaves look a lot better. Everything looks a lot better, and we're still maintaining well over 200 FPS in the top left up here consistently. So that's how you can boost your performance with shaders. And now that you know how to improve your FPS with our shaders, check out the video on your screen and in the description below on optimizing FPS with Optifine. You can use those settings along with shaders on Optifine to achieve over 200 FPS with Optifine shaders. Yes, you can even get 200 FPS with Optifine shaders using those settings in the description as well as on your screen right now, that video, go check it out. So nevertheless, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Give it a thumbs up and I'm out. Peace.